let's look at um, how correlation and convolution work on one-dimensional examples. Here we'll use a very simple uh, image, which is just an impulse. It's just all zeros except for a one. So we'll first take a mask W and correlate it with this. And then we'll try convolution with the same mask. So first correlation, um, we take our mask, we slide it past the image and do our sum of products. So in this first position, um, it's all zeros. So the output is a zero. The next position, um, it's also a zero. Next position is also a zero. So in this next position, um, the eight will align with the one. So I have eight times one, which is an eight. Okay. Then I have the two aligned with the one, so I get a two and then a three. And then this guy will be the two again. And now I'm back to a one and then zeros. To do convolution, remember I first um, flip the mask and then I do correlation. So similarly, I start in this position. Um, everything is zero, zero, zero. When I get to this point um, centered there, the one overlaps with the one. So I get a one as the output. The next position, the two overlaps with the one. So I get a two and then a three and a two and an eight. So just to note here, um, correlating a mask with an impulse gives you the mask back but flipped. Convolving a mask with an impulse gets you the mask back um, exactly. Two dimensions, uh, same sort of thing. Um, first doing a correlation. Um, we would get as an output, we would get the mask back, but flipped. So it would be a nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. So that's correlation. And convolution, we flip the mask, as you can see here, about both axes correlate then and we get the mask the original mask back exactly so that's what we get in the case when we correlate or convolve a mask with an impulse just some properties of these filters um, they're linear filters they're commutative and associative. And as I just mentioned, the convolution of a filter with an impulse yields the filter. A Gaussian is an important um, example of a spatial filter. We'll see this a lot. So in one dimensions, of course, uh, it's e to the minus x squared over two sigma squared, which has uh, this shape. Um, with a normalizing coefficient so that the integral integrates to one. In two dimensions, it's e to the minus x squared plus y squared over two sigma squared. And it's normalized so that the area equals uh, one, the volume, I, I mean. Um, when you implement this digitally, um, of course, you can't go to infinity. So you have to cut it off somewhere. And you should cut it off at a point where the values are pretty close to zero. So that's generally about three sigma out from the center. Um, when you do that, the normalizing coefficient won't be quite accurate then. So um, just to make sure that the values sum to one, you should just sum all your values and then divide by that sum. Some interesting facts about Gaussians is you can convolve with a Gaussian 
and then convolve again, and the effect is the same as convolving with a single large Gaussian. So this is a way to implement large Gaussian convolutions. And um, this just shows that why that's true. Um, the effective sigma for the large Gaussian is the square root of the sum of the squares of the smaller sigmas. And this is the, the proof of that. One other interesting thing is that if you repeatedly convolve an image with any filter, the effect is that of convolving with a Gaussian. And this comes from the central limit theorem, which says that the sum of n mutually independent random variables with zero means and finite variances tends toward the normal probability distribution. And also that the PDF, the probability density function, of the sum of two independent random variables is the convolution of their PDFs. Um, another point that's useful for implementation purposes is that of separable filters. So if we can take our mask and write it as a function as a product of two functions, one just of x, the other just of y, then the convolution can be split up this way as a convolution of the uh, h y function with the image followed by the convolution of the other function with the image. Namely, we do two 1D correlations or convolutions instead of a single 2D convolution. So, so why is this better? Uh, if we just look at the cost of this um, for a filter, um, and an image, um, recall that um, we have an image which is n by n and a little filter here, let's say little n by little n. So for a 2D convolution or correlation, we have n squared operations at every pixel and there are capital N squared pixels. So that's the order of that uh, operation for the entire image. For the separable case though, we have a uh, 1 by n filter followed by a, um, I'm sorry, an n by 1 followed by a 1 by n. So the cost of a convolving a 1 by n filter is just n and then with the n squared. And then I add to that, you know, the cost of that. So I have two n times n squared, or it's really just proportional to that. So basically what this is saying is, as my filter size grows, um, the, uh, if I did a 2D correlation, that would grow with the square of the size of the filter. Whereas if I separate it, it just grows linearly with the size of the filter. Finally, let's look at um, nonlinear filters. We're just going to look at the median filter here. So the median filter says, um, take the pixels in the neighborhood, sort the values, and then the output is the median. So this is useful for reducing uh, impulse noise, where I have a very large spike or um, noise value in my image. As an example, take this case where I have um, a ramp and um, the ramp has a very large uh, noise value right here. So if I go ahead and um, compute the, mil the filter here, let's say um, let's say that the width is 5. Okay, so I'll use a median filter of width 5. This is one dimensions. So um, at, uh, at x equals 3, my values that um, are in that set are 1, 2, 3, 4, and 20. So I take the median, which is the middle one, 
and the output G is 3. At x equals 4, the values within the neighborhood are 2, 3, 4, uh, 20, and 6. I sort those to get 2, 3, 4, 6, and 20. So the median, again, is the middle one. So g of 4 is 4. Um, at x equals 5, f is the set 3, 4, 20, 6, and 7. Sorting those is 3, 4, 6, 7, and 20. The median is 6. So g of 5 is a 6. So you can see it knocked down that um, peak um, without really affecting the values in the rest of the image here. This just shows um, how useful this is for this type of noise. So this image has been corrupted by salt and pepper noise, basically pixels that are, are uh, sprinkled with black. They're, they're just a sprinkling of black and white noise values. Doing a straightforward mean doesn't really reduce that noise, but the median uh, greatly reduces it. Um, just to show this real quick, um, let me just take these values. So what I'm going to do here is close. Okay, so I read in an image. Um, I'm going to add salt and pepper noise. MATLABs has this um, function. As you can see, there are um, values that are uh, our impulses, basically zeros and 255s. I'm going to perform an averaging filter using IM filter. And this is the result of that. So it doesn't really reduce the noise that much. Then I'm going to run a two-dimensional median filter on that noisy image. And as you can see, that greatly reduces the noise here. In summary, a spatial filter operates on a neighborhood of a pixel. The output pixel value is the result of the operation. A linear spatial filter performs a sum of products of the neighborhood values with the corresponding filter values. The median filter is an example of a nonlinear filter. And filters can be used for smoothing and sharpening images. Some questions. Is the two-dimensional Gaussian filter separable? Why or why not? What is the difference between convolution and correlation? And why might the median filter be preferable for some situations?